What is my say to that? <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Antiques Roadshow fails. I haven't finished oh yet. Oh god, I, my life's over. I thought no, it was it's not. Report. Now you thought it might be port or wine. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at times the long-running BBC show didn't quite go as planned. Got any favourite antiques roadshow fails? Let us know in the comments, don't be shy. Number 10 Ship Wash Basin So the steward would fill the copper reservoir with water. You'd keep in this department your toothbrushes and your flannels and your washing accoutrements. Some people like to bring their antiques to the show so they can find out the history of their items. But let's be honest, most people are only interested in finding out how much money the contents of their attic could land them at auction. This fine gent is clearly very keen to get a valuation on his ship's wash basin, which he purchased for £52 back in the 1950s, a small fortune then. So when expert Tim Wanacott breaks the news it's worth no more than two to three hundred pounds, he is not amused. I think you could get between two and three hundred pounds for it. That's all. Yeah. His attempt to round it up to £400 is impressive, but unsuccessful. At least his reaction was honest. I never heard the right. Number 9. Cartier Watch I want you to wear it before you ever think I in terms of I getting will. rid of it. You must do. While most reactions to valuations are fair, this one seems a little unreasonable. Expert Richard Price is given a Cartier Watch to evaluate by a guest. She's keen to sell it on so she can give the proceeds to her daughter later in life. Richard reckons the watch would fetch between £2,800 to £3,500 at auction, certainly not a sum to be sniffed at. Let's say at auction, £2,800 to £3,500. But the guest's reaction is pretty telling. She may say that the money would be a generous little gift, but her face suggests she was a little underwhelmed by the evaluation. It was a generous little gift, wasn't there? It's a very generous little gift. What more was she expecting? Number eight, the emerald brooch that isn't emerald. The clip brooch, that is probably worth around £3,000. Okay. okay. A diamond crescent brooch like that one would make between three and £4,000. Sometimes in life, the dream is better than reality. This couple are convinced their 1910 brooch is set with a large green emerald stone, and when roadshow jewellery historian John Benjamin tells them it would be worth £100,000 if their assumption was correct, the stakes are very high. Unfortunately for them, they're pretty far off the mark. Your pin, £10. <laughs> it's not emerald, it's just coloured glass. Still, the rest of their items are highly valued, which certainly isn't to be sniffed at, but it's a far cry from the small fortune of a valuation they were expecting. Just blown away, it's... Cash in on it while you can, folks. Number 7, the £10 evaluation. When things don't go to plan, you've just gotta laugh. Glass expert Andy McConnell sets up this couple's rather dented cup and plate set as potentially originating from the 1600s, worth a few hundred as an academic curiosity. But then he drops the bombshell. Or you accept it as a 150-year-old one and actually worth a tenner. Yes. <laughs> it's actually just a couple of hundred years old and is, in fact, worth the grand total of £10. Thankfully, the couple took it much better than some and burst out laughing at the news. And he is so tickled, he pays them a £5 note for their troubles. I think you best have a fiver for that. That's fantastic. I don't think I've owned had an owner to a better ending than that. What a man, what a couple, and what a moment. Number six, Rude Valuer. So I'm from New Jersey originally, and uh, my grandfather collected numerous antique tools. With the amount of tat the roadshow experts have to value every episode, we can forgive them for being a little tetchy sometimes. But Robert Tilney definitely takes it too far when presented with this axe to evaluate. 
The owner politely explains its provenance, hoping to find it's of reasonable value. But Robert shuts him down very quickly, proclaiming it's terrible and repeatedly pressuring him to clean it. Are you going to clean it because it's terrible? The owner's attempts to reason with the expert don't seem to register. Robert decides it's worth no more than £80 max and sends him on his way. Many viewers at home thought this was weirdly rude, and we have to agree. To be absolutely honest, 60 or 80 quid? But do clean the thing. Number 5. Fiona's National Park Blunder The roadshow is in one of Britain's most beautiful landscapes. You probably didn't think this show could get any more British, but this entry really takes the biscuits. While introducing an episode from Lake Windermere, host Fiona Bruce claims that the Lake District is Britain's largest national park. We're on Lake Windermere in the Lake District, our largest national park. This isn't true. It's actually Cairngorms in Scotland. So many viewers wrote in with complaints that the BBC were forced to open an investigation and eventually amended the episode to correct the error. Only in the UK could we get so worked up about something like this. And only in the Antiques Roadshow could such a small slip of the tongue become a genuine news story. Never change, BBC. Number 4. Fake Jonathan Swift Inscription So tell me about Stella. So Stella was the name that he gave to a girl called Esther Johnson mm -hmm. that he'd been a tutor for, I think, when she was eight years old. Yeah. The chance of a fake item being revealed on the roadshow is one of the biggest draws of the program. Everyone loves to see a fake. The owners of the item accepted, of course. And sadly for this couple, their metal box turned out to be one of them. The box is inscribed with the gift of Stella to Dean Swift, suggesting that it was a gift from Esther Johnson to writer Jonathan Swift. But as it happens, it's fake and an obvious one too. Now, Sheffield Plate, the material that this little caddy is made out of, wasn't invented until about 1743. So how could Stella have given this box to Dean Swift? No, she, she couldn't have done. The metal the box was made from, Sheffield Plate, wasn't invented until after the death of Stella. The couple's hopes are dashed, it's brutal, but also a bit funny if we're honest. Someone has created something that has this story behind it, which I'm afraid in the case of this object just is not true. It's probably worth 20, 30, 40 pounds as an object. Sorry. Number three, Peter Laley painting copy. The shadow of a dream, in other words, yeah. it's, it's not even by a studio assistant. I think right. it's a much later copy. Okay. Another episode, another roadshow guest's dreams crushed. This time, the guest has a painting he believes to be by Peter Laley, which would date it to the 1600s. And the roadshow expert suggests that, if it were in fact a Laley, it would be worth around a million pounds. But of course, it isn't quite as it seems. A little bit of clunkiness in the drawing of the hands. Mm -hmm. um, and then put on top of that this brown finish, which is quite deliberately antiquing it. It's actually a 19th century copy, deliberately antiquated and made to resemble a 16th century origin. The guest is naturally devastated, as would we be. In the end, it's only worth around £600. Not a bad amount by any means, but it's not exactly a million quid, is it? This show could be so cruel, and this is a great example of that. But decorative, yeah. nice enough. Sorry to let you down. That's all right, thank you very much. Number two, not so ancient death offering. The third and final offering in our trilogy of devastating roadshow fakes. This archaeology student is keen to have her item valued. The thing that worries me <clears throat> is that this would normally be what we call a B disc, B I, um, <clears throat> which actually has a hole in the middle. She believes it's an ancient death offering, which she picked up in a flea market. Her chatty and bubbly persona gives the impression she's desperate for the expert to give it his seal of approval. The build-up is long and tense. How old is it? Couple of years. Oh no! Are you joking? Are you joking? So when the reveal comes that it's just a reproduction and essentially worthless, it's both excruciating and hilarious in equal measure. The guest's eager anticipation is replaced with a wry smile and a general sense of despair. Who would have thought the idea of evaluating antiques on national TV could be so gripping? Thank you for being so oh, brave. I'm so upset about I'm that. I'm sorry. 
Number 1. Andy McConnell drinks urine. <laughs> Even the experts don't get it right all the time. Glass specialist Andy takes a swig from a bottle he dates to the 1840s, reckoning that the very brown liquid inside is either port or red wine. In fact, it's neither. It's 150-year-old pee mixed with human hairs and a very small percentage of alcohol. Yummy, in his own words. This is a clear winner. Then the liquid, urine, yummy. A tiny <laughs> oh, bit. Such good news. A tiny bit of alcohol. For such a comfy, gentle show, largely free of scandal, the sight of the usually so well put together experts swigging on ancient pee is just incredible. You never question the authority of the experts, so when they get something as monumentally wrong as this, it makes you question everything. You're glad you tried it now. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.